Hello, so this is a video a few people had requested and I was happy to oblige you to do it, although it is a bit scary. And this is all of the radium aircraft dials I currently own all put together to do a single video on. So there's ones from assortment of different planes here, mostly World War II military planes. And these dials are radioactive because they were painted with radium paint. Now, radium paint is really scary. Um, I've had people in videos go, oh, it's actually not, it's absolutely fine. It is really, really not. Um, now, you'll notice some of them are in bags. The reason is the dials that are loose are in bags or that are, have damaged ca casings because um, if radium dust gets out and you inhale it or ingest it, you are fucked. Um, that's the polite way of putting it. Basically what radium does when it gets in the body, especially if it's been ingested, it goes to the bones and then it causes leukemia or something even nastier known as radium necrosis or radium necrosis, something like that. And basically it decays your body while you're still alive. Um, read up on Ebbin Byers or the radium girls if you want to know what happens to people when they get radium inside them. It is not pretty. You literally rot while you're still alive. Basically your bones turn to dust. So anyway, I've got these radium dials here and I've got an assortment of Geiger counters and radiation detectors. What I've also got on the right, which I'll show you in a minute, is what I've done with little loose radium watch hands or radium needles that have fallen off of some of the dials or loose bits of radium paint that I've collected and put into sealed test tubes. Um, so, yeah, radium was retired normally in about the 1950s or 60s, people reckon, because basically people found much safer, better glow-in-the-dark paints. Um, but radium was used for a long time because it glowed in the dark. Now, to give you some idea of how radioactive radium is, one gram of pure radium, bear in mind these aircraft dials won't have pure radium in them because it was mixed into the paint. One gram of pure radium at, I think it was 18 inches according to the CDV 715's manual, gave off four Röntgen per hour. Now, but due to the inverse square law of radiation with gamma rays, what you do is basically every time you double the distance, um, you quarter the dose. So if you're going the other way, you times the dose by four. So if it's four Röntgen per hour, say for example, at 18 inches, when you're at nine inches, you times that four by four, and then you'd get 16 Röntgen per hour. Hmm, yeah, that's a bit scarier, isn't it? And then if you were to halve it again, you times that 16 by four. And the point is that, you know, one gram of radium, if you're pretty much point blank to it, is going to be giving you hundreds, if not thousands of Röntgen per hour. So, Funnily enough, the reason lots of these dials were retired from planes, unless the dials broke, was because of low luminosity. And the reason for that is, over time, radium eats into the other stuff in the paint and stops it glowing, which is kind of the weird irony of it. So what I'm going to do is just get a UV light and shine them on the dials for you, so you can see, I just need to go to the UV mode, there we go, and you can see if there's any glow coming off of these at all. A little bit coming off of some of those boost gauges there, a little bit of glow still on those ones, and... A little bit of glow on some of them. The only one that's glowing really brightly is that turn bank indicator on the right. But I'm not sure if that's radium or not. It's ever so slightly radioactive. But what happened with some of these dials is after they basically took the radium off at some point and then repainted them. So what ended up happening is you'll notice with some of them that some glow better than others. And sometimes that's because there's old radium paint on there plus the newer paint they put on. But these are all ones you can go over with a Geiger counter and you know see that are radioactive. So what I'm going to do now is just zoom the camera in and bank it along all of them for you. Um, so you can actually see all the dials closer up. Apologies, the lighting isn't the best here, but I want to be very careful where I did this video. Simply because, as said, you know, these dials aren't something you want to mess around with. I want it on a floor I can hoover easily after I've done the video. Um, you know, to basically make sure there's no radium left. Right, and also what I'm going to do is here, I've got a load of the old bits of radium from, um, you know, bits that have chipped off, so you can see that's like kind of just loose granulated paint there. So because it's everybody's favourite, what I'm going to do first is get the mini monitor. I'll put that here where you can hopefully see it, and I'll try and get in frame as well. Let me just turn the camera thing around so I can see it. There we go. So hopefully you can see the dial there. Um, let's just turn it on, and let's turn the speaker on. Notice that there's a lot of activity coming off of these just from them being there. Right, now let's get the probe. And what I'm going to do first is make sure that the window there doesn't face any of the dials, so you just hear the gamma energy coming through the side of the probe. Some really high 
activity around these ones. And that's the loose granules. So now if I go across again with the alpha window facing forwards, now the glass on the front of all of these that have glass remaining is definitely going to stop all the alpha. The plastic bag should stop the alpha as well, but any beta energy that's high enough will get through. So now let's do it again like this. So yeah, as you can see, it maxes the mini monitor out. So we'll turn that off now. So yeah, that's pretty scary. Now if I turn the chirping on on the therapy, we will put the therapy across all of them and you'll get a reading. Let me just hold that there a second so we can read the number. I don't know if that's going to be visible on camera, but that is saying 60 microsieverts there. This is calibrated for cesium-137, so it won't be too inaccurate on radium, in all honesty. Um, 62, 66, 78, 88, and this is gamma only coming through the case at the moment, 122 from this dial. Seventy-three, sixty-one, and if I get this granulated stuff and put it on top of this, that will be the highest reading of all. It might even get to 400 at this point. It's on about 200 odd at the moment, but yeah. So that gives you some idea of your accumulated dose. Now what I do want to show you, because this is really scary, is this is um, the total dose since I put a new set of batteries in here. Uh, this is in microsieverts. When it gets to one point, that will be millisieverts. So bear in mind, in a year, most people get exposed to about two millisieverts. Now what I want to show you might horrify you. Um, I hope it does, because I've had a load of people you know, as I said that annoyed me. Oh, it's not dangerous at all. So um, let's pan the camera down. Let's pull this over to here, where it's hopefully in frame. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Is it in frame? There we go. And now let's put this on here. And what I want you to see is just how quickly the numbers from the gamma only start going up. Now bear in mind, every one that clocks up on there would basically be a day's worth of radiation. Every one to two would be a day's worth of background radiation. So in a matter of maybe 10 seconds, you're getting a day's worth of radiation. Now what I want to do is show you this with the beta window open, because this is where it gets really scary. Um, so if I put that back down there, there, two, there we go, three. So basically what's happening here is every kind of second you're getting about a day's worth of background radiation from the energy coming off of just that paint that's there. Um, so yes, it's really scary. Now there's one more thing I want to try and do before I pack all this away. Um, actually there's two things I want to do. One is to first show you that, as I've said before, um, simply having a little bit of lead on its own will not stop the crazy readings that come off of these. So let's go back onto this mode. Oh, look, the alarm's going off. Ooh. There we go. So let's go back onto dose rate. There we go. So yeah, as you can hear, that's pretty high. So let's get a bit of lead sheeting, put that in front of those dials, and put that there. Oh, yeah, see? It's cut the dose down, but there is still gamma rays going through. As I said before, it's because the more lead you have, the better it works. But one simple bit of lead isn't going to stop, you know, those doses. Right, so now for the last bit of the experiment I wanted to do. I want to get this, which is the old British MDE3. Oh, actually, sorry, was that out of frame? Let me just zoom back out, because I was an idiot, and I totally forgot that um, what I was doing was um, probably out of frame. So let's just do that again. You could at least hear it, couldn't you? But let's put that lead there. There we go. Put that back there. And you can see, look, the dose is still going up, even with the lead sheeting there, because as I said before, a thin bit of lead will not stop gamma radiation. So, that's that demonstrated. So now what I want to do, um, I'll just turn the chirping off on this again, so we're not distracted by it, is we will get this guy, the old um, MD3, which is basically a retrofitted Mark II Radiac, and what I want to see is if I surround this by the radium paint and radium dials, will the numbers start going up on it? Because um, that would be fascinating if that happens. So. I'm just going to literally put all these radium dials surrounding it. The reason being that that way there should be gamma coming off of them into the ionization chamber of the uh, MD3. 
And yes, look at that, right, I'm just going to rearrange the camera so you can see this a bit better. But, um, I think this should demonstrate, just in purely gamma radiation alone, how much comes off of these dials, especially if you've got a lot of them, you know, in a close succession. So if the camera wants to focus, come on camera, there we go. Right, see the needle is close to zero, but see how it's moving. Now bear in mind, one centigrade is over one Rontgen. And that's in increments of two. So where it's going to about where it is, it's staying between about one and two, um, I'd say. Um, as in zero point, you know, zero one, zero point zero two. Um, so that's like 100 to 200 milli Rontgen per hour coming off in gamma radiation terms from all those dials surrounding that. And that's pretty scary, uh, in all honesty. So, there you go. That gives you some idea again for the people who wanted to see all of my radium aircraft dials, and I'll probably get some more, just how hot they're actu you know, they actually can be. Um, and again, the, they're really cool to collect, but if you do collect them, please, please, please make sure you follow good safety precautions, you know, like bagging them up, you know, storing them in good boxes, don't, don't sleep next to them, you know, don't put them in your living room on the mantelpiece because they look nice. They're really cool old, old antiques, but you know, I think a lot of people don't realise just how much radium, you know, how scary radium is, even with what's in radium paint. And I said, if it flakes off and you ingest it or inhale it, then it becomes far, far, far more serious. Um, but you know, we know from the history of radium dials what happened to a lot of the people that painted them, the poor radium girls, you know. Um, radium is quite a scary thing. And again, like all this stuff, if it's used for good for science, you know, it saved lots of lives through radiotherapy and things like that, but, you know, handled incorrectly and it can be very, very dangerous indeed. So, I hope you found this interesting. As you can see, the needle is still rocking back and forth because he's being energised, and you could hear from the mini-monitor and the therapy, you know, just how much, how many decays there are hitting them. I think when I was reading on an actual proper scientific article about it earlier, there's several billion decays per second that come off of one gram of radium. And that's alpha, beta, and gamma, but it gives you some idea of just the you know, sheer energy that comes out of radium. So, there you go. Um, that's all my radium aircraft dials, and now maybe you can understand why I keep them in steel boxes and use lead sheeting and all that sort of stuff, because, yeah, they are um, not the uh, friendliest things in the world, I guess, to keep around.